Hey there, YouTube. Whiskey Cactus here, welcoming you back to our Let's Play of The Letter. This is episode number 12, and in the last episode, we had a big fancy party at our new mansion. And, um, some stuff went down. It became a Spanish soap opera, or an American soap opera, or any kind of soap opera. Let's be real, it's been a soap opera this whole time, but, uh... <laughs> Um, go watch the, pe the previous episode if you want to really get into the details of what happened. But suffice it to say, enough stuff happened that Hannah decided she has had enough of the bullshit with Luke. Um, so we're going to go ahead and continue. Oh, crap. I don't know if that's what I wanted to do, actually. Let me, let me, real quick. Yeah. I don't. I want to load game. That's what I want to do. So I want to make sure I'm playing from the correct save file. So it should be this one. Twelve eighteen, nine twenty seven p.m. That looks about right. Let's go ahead and load from this one. Cause I'm not sure which one it's loading from. Yeah, I'm not sure which one it was loading from before. So, um, yeah. We are back to where we were. I wish the same can be said about what I'm about to do. Okay. Simple isn't the adjective I will use to describe the task at hand. Because really, how does one tell their husband that they want to separate and say that no, this is not a divorce? There we go. There's some context. <laughs> not yet, at least. The possibility is there, but still, how am I even to explain that to Luke without him throwing a fit? Cutting too deeply into my sausages, <laughs> I open my mouth to excuse myself. That is, until I spy Luke mashing and stirring his poached eggs with a fork like a petulant child. He has been silent all the while, chin in his hand, an elbow resting on the table. I worry that my absence after the debacle may have caused more harm than good. Luke! Here we go. Got an, achie <laughs> Got an achievement. It's not you. Okay, it's you. There's a lot. By the way, I think there's like a hundred something achievements with this game. So, you're going to have to play it a whole bunch of times and do a whole bunch of different, excuse me, a whole bunch of different routes in order to uh, get all these achievements. I, I think we need a bit of a break. You know, some time apart. At my words, he grows still and silent. I'm not quite sure whether I should be worried or not. I take it as my cue to keep talking. It's not permanent or anything like that. Just for a while. In a few days, perhaps. I was thinking I could move back into our penthouse in the meantime, but I, I won't be moving out right away, so that I can help settle everything here. And I haven't even thought of packing yet. And I'll want to ask Johans to assign some of our staff. Uh, unless you want the penthouse anyway, then I'll stay here instead. Maybe don't. Maybe go to the penthouse and leave him here. Just, just a, just a helpful suggestion. Hmm? No, you take the penthouse. It'll be easier for you. It isn't supposed to be this easy, is it? Can you really react so aloof to it? Isn't this to your liking? I imagine that you'd like the space and independence. You'll have the bed and covers to yourself, and you can have whatever you want prepared for meals. You can even have all the wine you want, though I... I'd rather that you don't. This isn't about that, Hana. Well, it's partly that, but... The man stops playing with his food, choosing instead to push the plate aside. Here we go. Let's throw down. I'll fight you. What's wrong, Luke? He slumps back in his chair and just stops short of putting his feet up on the table. I suspect he's wanting some wine or absinthe by now. But any sort of alcohol is suspiciously absent in his hands. Aside from that disaster yesterday and you telling me you want a divorce, everything is peachy keen. Well, good. All right, no worries then. Will you want me to start in the letters, then? To start the divorce settlements and whatnot? Will you be seeking ways to throw me out onto the street without a penny to my name? No, Luke, this isn't a divorce. I just told you this is only temporary. Are you really having a sulk because of what she said yesterday? If you're not sure of what she said yesterday, then I strongly advise you to go back and watch the last episode. I am having a sulk because you believe her. Well, I don't know if it's been established that I believe her or not. You stormed out and now you're asking for us to split up? 
soon enough, you'll want to throw me out like I'm a piece of trash. Well, to be fair, you are a piece of trash. Do you think I would be this <laughs> calm if I believed her, Lucille Mitchell Wright? Because believe me, if I did, well, it wouldn't be pretty. Besides, I know how you feel about children. It makes a whole statement laughable. Not if he didn't use protection. Sure, whatever you say. His mouth draws into a thin line, and I can't bring myself to comment on his half-hearted reply. To me, the silence that follows feels oppressive. It only emphasizes the wall that has been built up by my... Ob I don't know that word. Oh my god. Obeisance and his hubris. We found a word I don't know. Oh my god. I'm not as smart as I thought I was. Add it to my uh, list of words to look up. And it looms between us, keeping us when apart. When are you leaving? In a week? How about right the fuck now? It won't take that long to pack. After all saints, perhaps? How about right the fuck now? I'll go and inform the staff of this. He only nods. Okay, we got a journal update. I'd be lying if I said it didn't disappoint me. Well, here we go. During breakfast, Hannah asked Luke for a... Uh, blah, blah, blah. Hannah asked Luke for a break. She'd be moving back to her penthouse, to their penthouse, for a couple of days. Despite trying to remain aloof, her husband accused her of wanting a divorce. Hannah insi insisted she simply needed a break from him. I expected more resistance. The man could be stubborn as a mule if he wants to be. Perhaps I can leave now, just to spite him. Maybe do that. Maybe do that, and maybe you might not die as fast. Maybe. But that isn't like me. Even if this does end in a divorce, a thing we both surely wish to avoid, we can still leave on amicable terms. There's no point in making a mountain out of a molehill. What are you still doing here? Just leave. You still have some packing to do, don't you? Okay, bye, bitch. Go ahead. <laughs> I won't stop you. Go ahead. And do nothing. There isn't much to do, it seems, whenever I step up to the plate and try to take responsibility for something. Perhaps because everything is already being handled by someone hired specifically for that job. And with Johans overseeing the staff and Luke handling everything else as a whole, that doesn't leave much for me. God, I don't like being in the kitchen near that friggin' hatch. <laughs> I can't even take the job of delegation. Because all it takes is a word to one of the senior staff and everything will be taken care of for me. Moving in here a few days ago may have very well been the chore that took the most effort from me. And that didn't take any real effort at all. Yes, Honor, go buy a mansion in the middle of nowhere. Good idea. Great plan. There are no dishes to set aside and busy myself with. Any mess left behind is now nearly non-existent. To sit on a counter while eating cake is supposed to be my next plan. Alas, there isn't even one to finish off. And I don't really know what brought me to the kitchen in the first place. Oh, oh, just a, a fact of being drawn to the creepiest spot. It's not like I'm craving anything else, nor do I have any unfinished business left here. I'm getting ready for a quick time event. Hold on. <laughs> Z-key spacebar. Let's do this. There's a calling to the... What I say. What I fucking say. Speaking of calling, why not just do that? Might as well, since I have nothing else to do. At least that will require some effort on my part. With how cut off from the rest of Luxborn the mansion is, and... How long it was abandoned before we moved in, having a landline is out of the question. The solution is supposed to be your mobiles, though it isn't much, considering how spotty the signal is in the area. It'll take a bit of maneuvering to even get a single bar as it is. It takes a bit, as I said it would. I have to park my rear on one of the cold drawers, but that suits me just fine. Another matter that needs my effort is who to call. She who must not be named is certainly off the list. How about Mary Ann? Doesn't leave much in the category of close friends who attended the party. Oh, maybe Becky. Maybe we're going to call Becky. A.K.A. Becca. Along with the category of who else is awake at this early hour. Soon enough, I manage and the call goes through. Hello, Rebecca Gale's here. Boom. I remember shit. Hi, Becca. I don't hate you as much as Hannah because you were actually quite nice to Hannah. <laughs> so... Becky. Uh, Hannah? Yeah. Oh, wait. How did you get my number? You responded to your RSVP through the phone. It's all saved in here, of course. 
I thought I'd like to say hi and make plans and get together sometime. Also, I'd love to hear news about your mother and father and about you, my dear. Oh, I hope I didn't wake you up. Oh, you're good. It's sports day at school today, so I was just prepping for that. Figures that you'd be a teacher as well. I'm sure your students must absolutely adore you. <laughs> Don't know about that. Mathematics? History, actually. Anyway, it's real nice to know you've got my number. I was going to ask for yours because Mom wanted to keep in touch. You could have asked, silly girl. I would have gladly given it to you. Couldn't, though, because, well, the thing that happened. The thing. But really, I'm sorry, though. I gotta run. School, schedule, stuff. Is there anything else you want to say? Don't want to use the mobile while driving. Oh, of course, of course. I shouldn't keep you. But I wanted to thank you for your company yesterday. Not a problem. I was hoping you could thank Zachary on my behalf as well. Mm. He was really kind and wonderful. Well, you can tell him that yourself if you want. I can give you his number. Ooh. The plot thickens. Oh, no, no. I don't want to be a bother. Intruding on his privacy. Pretty sure he'd be fine with it. If you two on a first name basis and all. So, his number. Right, it's... Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> it's too early in the episode for this shit. Come on, I just want to have a nice, relaxing gaming experience. <sighs> I don't need this bullshit. The call starts to go static, much to my frustration. A strange clicking noise drowns out most of her words, too. I can barely understand what she's saying. And the line completely dies. Fuck. <sighs> I can feel a headache coming along. It's just building up, starting from a light throbbing on one side of my head. Once again, my fingers are back on the quick time keys. The static is gone, and that helps a lot. But there is still that incessant, horrible clicking. Again, and again, and again. Which doesn't make sense. The mobile's turned off, isn't it? And if it isn't coming from the phone, then where? Maybe don't go looking for it. Maybe just... No! Hannah! <laughs> looking about. I can't help but let my eyes be drawn to the hatch leading to the wine cellar once more. Maybe don't. Maybe just walk away. Oh, God. That's when the clicking stops and I can hear that crying. That familiar crying from before. All right, I'm gonna take the headphone out of my ear so I can't hear anything. So that way I can actually read this <laughs> without being distracted. All right, hold on. Here we go. Hannah called Rebecca Gales, hoping to catch up with an old friend. The talk got interrupted by a horrible clicking and the cry of a woman from the wine cellar. I don't like that the hatch door is open. That is not making me feel warm and fuzzy. What happened the other day, when I was told that nobody should have been down there? I tried to forget it because of how it unsettled me, so... One can hardly do that when I'm looking at the very thing I'm trying to forget. Somebody is crying down there again, but if I leave it alone, it simply won't stop bothering me for- oh, God, no! <laughs> for the rest of the day. They might have forgotten to lock it with the party going on. This again? If somebody is pulling my leg, I will not be happy! Mm-hmm. No, what? Oh my god. Why is this what we're doing? Alright. We're gonna have to have a quick time event. Alright, hold on. True enough, all it takes is a bit of a pull to open the hatch. As I look down to the cellar, a sense of uneasiness washes over me. It isn't just the sudden onset of vertigo and nausea, but also the darkness. It's suffocating. And as I look down, it feels as if it's looking back at me. Okay, Nietzsche. <laughs> I worry that something will suddenly pull me into the deep. Yeah, yeah, that's what's gonna happen, Hannah. Why don't you get the fuck away? <laughs> the cries... The cries drown beneath the shrieks that start echoing in my head, high and shrill like nails being dragged across a chalkboard. They're all screaming, shouting at me, and I can just feel her rage. Help me. She wants to drown me, drag me down, and crush me in the very depths of darkness until there is nothing left of me. The deep abyss waits for me, for my death. They're all calling for it. This is a nightmare. Fuck, there's a rope. All right, all right, all right, all right. 
<laughs> just getting ready for the quick time. Because it's going to happen very, very soon. There's a rope around my neck and I can feel the rest of me being torn apart. And they're still screaming. I'm screaming. Though it is not my voice that escaped from my lips. I don't like how my computer's lagging right now, either. It claws through, climbing up and forcing its way up my throat like putrid bile. I choke and gag, yet I scream and shriek all at the same time. And I'm me, but not me. Oh. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Okay. I'm not exactly sure what just happened. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I saw it said press tab. And then I pressed tab and it said to like skip. So I don't know what just happened. So hold on. Real quick. I'm gonna go back and see what I missed. Let me save. Let me save here. I'm just gonna save like down in this corner so I know what it is. Um, I will meet you back here after I see what the fuck I just missed. Okay, so. I had to resist the ghost's influence. And I could press tab to skip it. So that's what that was. <laughs> so anyway, back to this. It pushes me down to my knees before I'm prone and vulnerable on my stomach. It makes me tumble, and I can just feel my whole body seizing, writhing on the floor. Everything and nothing hurts feels like I'm on the verge of death, and if I'm not dying, I nearly wish I actually am. Hana? Hana, what is going on in here? Why are you? Prince. <gasps> Interesting. Seeing Luke, something- Oh. Prince. Hmm. Something to think about. Seeing Luke, something snaps back, and I am able to take a gasp of air on my own volition for the first time in what felt like centuries. Uh huh. I wonder if there's some kind of past life thing going on. I would have rejoiced and cried for his name if the pain still did not rack my body. Instead, all I can do is stare listlessly as he comes to my side and lifts me up, cradling me in his arms. He tries to get me to my feet, perhaps to take me out of here. But all he's able to do is to get me to sit, make sure I'm not thrashing, trashing on the floor. Thrashing on the floor, I believe, is what they're going for. I can still feel my muscles spasm, limbs jerking like a puppet's on a string. Luke holds me tight and keeps me still so that I do not hurt myself anymore. Whatever it is that happened, it has my mind feeling frayed and battered. Eventually, the pain dies down into a dull ache, and my own tongue stops feeling like cotton. It is only now that I can feel the wetness on my cheeks, tears streaking down my face. <coughs> the coughing racks my body now that I don't feel like choking. And it just all feels so horrible. But I don't care. I don't care. Please! What happened here? Who did this to you? I don't know. I'm so sorry. Shh, it's all right. You're safe now, Hana. You're safe now. Interesting. Dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. We have graduated to the Zachary arc. I don't like this. <laughs> The pleasant aroma hits me long before I cross the threshold. So, I'm still, I'm not really sure what the deal was with that event. It seemed like I just had to press tab. I was supposed to resist the ghost's influence. And the only thing it was telling me to do was to press tab. So I pressed tab. I'm not going to go back and look at it again. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below if, I, if there was something significant that I missed there. This humming is really bugging the shit out of me. I don't know what it is and it's not making me comfortable. Faint but light and warm. A reminder of what home is. Pa's stern but commending gaze, Ma's tender smiles, the sunlight filtering through the eaves in the morning. 
and the distinct smell of cinnamon and vanilla as it drifts through the air every time something cooks in cooks from the room. The room, our room, Ma and Pa's pride and joy. My sister and I too, eventually. But we ain't allowed there. Not yet. Not until we're taller or older. Not until we've learned how to take care of ourselves and not burn our hands or reach the cupboards without having to be lifted. But a little peek wouldn't hurt, yeah? Floorboards are cold under my feet more than it usually is. The wall's more forbidding than what I'm used to. Father, far, eh, farther and farther the room goes. Fuck. <laughs> oh, okay, that was Ma's singing. Alright, that makes me feel a little better. <laughs> Ma's singing ceases and Pa. No, please wait. I'll be good. I'll sleep on time. Don't go. I can hear. I can't hear Pa. Not above the raucous clanging and the deafening roar of gunshots, nor the screams replacing the comforting soft melodies. There's only one. Only the blinding fear. When my foot slips, the Red Sea that catches me is bitter and frigid. The blood that drips in my hand is warm, warm, warm. It ain't my blood. The walls tumble and everything goes quiet. All right. We're in Zachary's room. All right, so now that it doesn't appear that we're in any immediate danger, let's go ahead. Let's take a look at relationship. So we already have high relationship with Isabella. I'm assuming this is post... I, I missed the date again. I didn't see what the date was. But uh, we have decent relationship with Hannah. Then we have standard relationship with everybody else so far. Okay. So now we want to go to journal... We are back. Oh, that's, yeah, that, right. Oh, wait. Profiles. That's what I wanted to do. So we now have Zachary's profile. So we have Zachary, Zach Steele. Birth date, March 20th. He's a Pisces. He's 31 years old. Six foot. Freelance photographer. American agnostic. Diploma in digital film. All stuff we kind of knew already. Likes are pie, photography and filmography, documentaries, cooking, acoustic guitar, and video games. Other than the cooking and photography and filmography and documentaries, <laughs> he sounds very much like me. <laughs> Before his parents' death, he lived... Well, and, and also the six-foot-zero thing. <laughs> I am very much not that. Yeah. Before his parents' death, he lived in New Jersey, where his family owned a diner and a bakery. He and his older sister were orphaned due to a hate crime. Okay, so that's what that's what we were just kind of flashbacking to. Um, flashbacking. And they were forced to move to England where their grandparents lived. That explains a lot. Okay, he had loved cooking and helping out with the old diner, but grew lazy and disinterested after the incident. It did not help that he was one of the few blacks in a predominantly white community at the time. His passion for the visual arts was sparked when he found old Polaroids and home movies of his parents. Freelancing helped pay his rent, but the man had long set his sights on the indie film scene. It was during the creation of his first documentary that a robbery occurred, and Ashton was there to investigate. Okay, being in the wrong place at the wrong time led to Zachary being placed as a suspect, but the rookie detective helped him clear his name, so that makes a lot of sense. That's how he met Ashton. All right. Well, there we go. All right, guys, we're on chapter three so i don't know again i don't know like if that's the end of everything to do with hannah um i assume it's probably not but uh who knows so far nobody's died except rose <laughs> takes a few moments for everything to fall into place for my eyes to adjust to the relative darkness of the room Despite the pleasant chill the AC brings, my shirt is clinging tightly to me and my blanket a tangled mess around my throat. Warning has not even arrived, and yet... <sighs> Way too early for this thing, man. And too long. Too long since I, the last I've woken up drenched in my own sweat, head littered with thoughts that are gone as soon as my eyes open. All too often, only imprints and brief images are left to haunt me for the rest of the day, or until my mind forgets about it. Egad, whichever comes first. Okay, yet vivid or not, what little I can remember does not matter. Regardless, the desperation sticks, clawing up, pushing, urging me to relive every moment, every sensation, and... There's a twinkle in Ma's eyes when she looks up from her work, flour dusting her nose and cheeks. The scent of freshly baked bread wafts from the oven as soon as Papa o Pa opens it, 
and the homely fragrance of honey fills the room. He reaches up to wipe the small beads of sweat away from his forehead before gesturing for me to come closer the moment he spots me on my little hiding place behind the door. I expected him to be angry, but his pat on my back when I come within arm's reach is encouraging enough. We'll have to taste these first before we put it up for sale tomorrow. You up for it, little man? Is it good enough? A knock cuts through the air before I can answer. Sharp, heavy, demanding, familiar. So distantly familiar. Ma ushers me out the kitchen when Pa moves to answer it. But I know, I know what waits outside. The taste of blood in my mouth sends an unpleasant churning in my gut. Ma's apron crinkles under my tight grip. Fuck. <laughs> something snaps back into place. This better be Ashton or Becca or something. My bed remains in an utter, utter disarray. The walls still need a new paint job, and the wall clock ticking opposite my bed is as unsettling as ever. Ash is right. I should have already replaced that when I had the chance. You're no longer there, Zachary. Here and there, a miles apart. Calm down. Breathe. The pressure of my own fingers against my temple is a welcome sensation over the anxiety gripping me. Never really did anything to stave off the headaches sure to follow after this before, but it grounds me. A little reminder that I am safe, away from the place I once called home from Ma and Pa's. The urgency with each rap that follows finally chases away the ghosts threatening to hang around. <laughs> Word choice. <laughs> Why anyone thinks it's a good idea to knock at someone's door this late, someone else's door this late confuses me. Nana would chase them all away with a broom if she was here. But no matter, it's a welcome break from the thoughts about to take a morbid turn if left festering. Probably just Ash anyway, looking for a place to free- uh, crash. Looking for a place to crash. Wonder of wonders why he's bothering with the courtesy when he never did so before. Even with that hunch, though, habit compels me to check who it is first, the people. Better safe than sorry, they say. I swear to God, if I see a fucking ghost of the people. Except the person that greets me on the other side ain't him. Unless his hair grew longer overnight and start Oh, it's Isabella. Alright. And he started wearing a ponytail, of course, which I highly doubt will happen anytime soon, no matter how funny that looks in my head. But waste no time opening the latches. Isabella. It's Hello late. there. Hi, Isabella. There's something I can't quite pinpoint in her eyes when she looks up. Her face a pallid shade, shoulders tense, breathing heavy, an uncontrollable shaking in her hands she's trying to hold back. Hot hide. Oh, she's trying to hide. Hide if I didn't know any better. Hey, Zach. Sorry. I, I know it's weird for me to show up at this hour, but you are the closest to my office, and... No, 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 no. It's perfectly fine. I, I'm not really working on anything right now. Do you want to come in? Is it... is it all right? I know you should be sleeping at this hour, but I thought... I'm sorry. I, I just thought... I have no idea why I went here. My feet just moved on their own after I got out of the office, and... and... sorry. She trails off, her voice lost in the muggy night air. Is she gonna tell me about the ghost? Because I'm assuming this is a... I did, uh, once again, I would know this if I saw what the friggin' date was, but I always forget to look there. Um, if this is after what happened in the... in the office... with... you know... <laughs> the other quick time event that I didn't skip... I wait for her to say more, but instead, her only response is a downward shift of her gaze back to her still trembling hands as if the motion alone is enough of an explanation. A minuscule gesture. Easy to miss if one is not paying attention. But for someone who has seen the same expression on the mirror, done the same thing too many times when night terrors are inevitable, when night terrors are inevitable it is not. Hey, 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 don't worry about it. At least you not. Ash just bodges in and crashes on the couch whenever he feels like it. I swear, that guy is one fine hairline away from being a criminal. One fine hairline. Besides, you already know you can count on me whenever. Without waiting for her answer, I step away from the door and saunter over to the kitchenette. For a few good seconds, only the clinking of the plates can be heard above the constant tick-tock. Late as it may be for a snack, familiar motions keep me occupied, steering my mind away from dangerous, dangerous thoughts. Isabella's company is not unwelcome, either. Whatever her reasons for showing up here at such an hour doesn't matter. I'll be damned if I just turn her away, frazzled as she is. The door clicks shut behind her when she finally enters, feet scuffling softly against the tiled floor. In all the years I've known her, she has never once lost her ever-upbeat spirit. Yet in this particular moment, as she stands in my doorway, holding her arms close to herself, it's as if I'm looking at someone completely withdrawn from the person I've come to know all these years. Do you want a drink or eat anything? 
Now, I haven't restocked my food stash yet, so ingredients may be a bit limited. But I'm sure I can whip something up with what I have here. Just water will do, please. Thanks, Zack. What? No additional food requests? That's new. I'll put something together for you anyway. And feel free to make yourself at home. You ain't exactly a new visitor here. Although my room's not at its most presentable right now. Sorry. Uh, new freelance gigs and such. Didn't have time to fix things up here lately. It's okay. I don't mind. Usually she'd have something more to say about that. A quip, a witty remark to provoke a laughter or two. Nothing from her this time. Only a weak smile before she takes a seat on the couch and a silence that stretches out until what we left hanging feels disconcerting. Before everything turns stifling and awkward, I continue talking if only to keep the dead air at bay. How's one supposed to keep a conversation going when the person you're talking to is like this? No comment. <clears throat> uh, anyway, um, gigs. <laughs> Can you believe this one client we got? Boss had all my schedules shoot shifted after they caught wind of this couple buying a new property. Uh-huh. Man, <laughs> must be nice to have all the money in the world. The world itself moves for you, huh? She's curled up on one side of the couch and hugging her knees close when I bring the tray carrying the sandwiches and water she requested. She starts to straighten up as I'm unloading the contents, but pauses as soon as I hold up my hand in a halting gesture. You're a guest. Didn't I say you're free to make yourself at home? Here's your water. Careful. The tremor in her hands, though lighter now, still hasn't subsided when she reaches out for the glass. Give her a questioning look, but she is quick to avert her eyes, keeping herself occupied by taking small gulps of water. Or maybe she just doesn't want, to want me asking questions. Worrying. Sudden loss for words, this bout of quiet not normally present in our chats. Even the creaking of the old chair when I casually take the seat is a welcome break. Although the company's familiar, this has gone way past unnerving. What happened? Overtime at work? Ha <laughs> ha you could say that. She doesn't answer immediately. Another gulp drains her glass of its remaining contents. One would think it would be enough to help her recover, yet she doesn't lose her taut grip on the glass as she cradles it on her lap. Oops. Her eyes take an unfocused gaze when she speaks again. I... yeah. Boss handed me extra work today. After... after what happened. To Rose. Rose? Why do I feel like you've mentioned her before? Sorry, I'm better with remembering faces than names. Oh, Zachary. <laughs> oh, come on, man. It's the green-haired bitch that died in a very, very brutally murdery way. She's... was... she was my co-worker. That will take some getting used to. I was just talking to her the other day. Was? Did she resign or something? I, I think I'm missing a few details here, Bella. You've never met her. I think I did mention her once, or twice. It doesn't matter. You probably heard her name recently from the news than me. Something clicks, then. A little memory from the night before. Bright red light from the dark room. Strong odor of the stop bath, the television's barely audible murmur in the background, and a glimpse of a bloody room. News is everywhere even in the morning that follows. I just didn't think its effects will strike someone this close to me. Oh. Damn. I, I, I didn't mean to bring that up. No, I... like I said... It'll take some getting used to, but it'll get better. I hope it will. Things might become a little busier for me, though. She left a lot of things unfinished. And I'm one of the few people in the office who knows how she works. Boss thinks the transition will be easier if I handle it. Ah, uh, that explains it. Well, just don't forget you still need rest. Even the most hard-working people I know don't keep hours as late as this. Hell, the subway stopped running hours ago. Crime rate might be lower here than most places, but that doesn't mean you can walk around freely in the middle of the night. Especially when there's ghosts. It's just for today. Still a good thing you drop by here first. I'm not just about to let you walk out here alone, especially not in the middle of the night. Who knows what else could happen? I'm not saying you should go right now, but I could accompany you home if you... N no! Wait, please! Uh-oh, what up? The vehement tension in her voice makes me pause, as in this instant the mask she's been keeping up falls apart, if only for a short while. Right then and there I understood what's hiding behind her unfocused stare from the moment she arrived. Fear. Pure, unadulterated fear. 
It's disturbing to see such marring her usual us bleh, upbeat usual upbeat countenance. With a sigh, I cross the small distance separating us and keep kneel in <laughs> I can read, guys, I promise, and kneel in front of her. <laughs> she doesn't flinch when I do so. However, the way she appears to make herself smaller against the couch is telling enough. Bella, this ain't just about your co-worker, is it? We finally gonna tell somebody about the fucking ghost? What is it really about? I'm all ears. It's the fucking ghost, Zack. Okay. The sound of glass shattering rents through the air as soon as her hold on it loosens. In the span of a few seconds, her breathing grows labored. I don't know. I don't know anymore. She claps her hands over her ears, pressing it tightly against the sides of her head. Her voice grows weaker with each word, each plea coming out of her mouth. Please, please don't leave me alone. I don't want to be alone right now. I can't shake it off. Everywhere, it's... Everywhere's not safe, and... I'll hide, I'll hide, Isabella. Look at me, look at me. My hands are firm on her shoulder when I pull her up to look at me. It takes every force of will to ignore the terror in her eyes in favor of taking control of the situation. Too close, too similar. Breathe. Breathe. You're safe here. Inhale. All. Exhale. Stay in the present. I'm here. No one's gonna hurt you. Do you want to talk about it? I mean, you could try to fight the ghost, but I have a feeling you'll probably lose. Can't really punch a ghost. Pokemon taught me that. The force with which she shakes her head is enough reason to drop the topic altogether. No more. Please. No more. I don't want... I don't want to remember anymore. Okay, no more talking. I won't ask anymore. Can I get you anything? Another glass of water? I think I have a tub of that pistachio ice cream you love so much. Uh, we're gonna have to clean this mess first. Will you be fine on your own for a little while? She nods lightly before retreating into herself again. No more words are exchanged after that, and I take that as my cue to start cleaning the shards littering the floor before either one of us gets hurt. The quiet hum of the AC is a pleasant distraction as I go over the menial task. More so than her ragged draws of breath, or my little feeble attempts to tell a quick story or two. But the latter does the trick, and soon enough, she's already drifted off by the time I return with the promised glass of water, her chest rising and falling in steady rhythm, the strain on her shoulders gone. Frankly, I've never seen her this still. She mumbles something I don't quite catch when I carry her to the empty bed, and hugs herself tighter against the mess of blankets. In spite of the fact that she appears relaxed, a small frown on her face hasn't quite disappeared. Whatever happened to her won't be leaving her anytime soon. But for her sake, I hope it won't stay long with her. Because no matter what promises I've made, this is a kind of fear no person could shield her from. I should know. There's still questions left to be answered. But the late hour, coupled with the sudden exhaustion, made my old couch a more comfortable bed than it typically is. Oh god, <laughs> are we gonna dream something spooky? Darkness immediately welcomes me as soon as my head hits the makeshift pillow. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I can only wish the dreams will keep at a distance for now, for both of us. October 25th, Tuesday. Okay, so... Mm. Let's take care of this so I don't have to deal with it while I try to read. The first few notes, while muffled, are enough to wake me. In the end, it became one of those nights when sleep passes like the blink, like a blink and is plagued with vague, fuzzy thoughts. I lift a hand to rub away the drowsiness from my eyes, although it does little to relieve the gritty, burning sensation from my eyelids. Outside, the sun has yet to peek over the horizon. But night has already given way to the cool morning light, washing everything in subtle gray hues. At this hour, the entire city remains unstirring. Answer your phone, Zach! Jesus Christ! <laughs> Ordinarily, waking up before my own alarm means abusing the snooze button twice or thrice just to catch those precious few extra minutes of sleep. But the persistent ringing makes it impossible now. This better be good. Groggily, I scramble for the bag sitting at the foot of the bed. Oh god, it's Ash, of course. The ringing still hasn't stopped, even as I fish the phone out, and Ashton's name flashes brightly on the screen when I turn it on. It must be pretty urgent if he hasn't dropped the call yet. Took you long enough, Z-Man. Alright, now I'm gonna open up the journal. So we are on the 25th. Hello, Zach. A frightened Isabella Santos knocked at Zachary Steele's apartment in the middle of the night. Shaken, she refused to say what happened. Zachary let her stay regardless. Okay. 
So let's keep going with this phone conversation, and maybe at the end of the conversation we'll go ahead and wrap up the episode or something like that. We're at about 42 minutes, but I think I'm cutting like a couple minutes out for having to replay that one part. But here we go. Took you long enough, Z-Man. Ashton, it's six. Six in the morning. Sun hasn't even risen. Hell, my brain ain't even awake yet. Stop calling me Z-Man. <laughs> it's 20 past six, Zach. Oh, it's a 20 past six, Zach. Ugh. You want to talk? Give me back my five extra minutes, Ash. I want my sleep. Hey, don't make fun of me. I can be a, a more a person, too, if I want to. What's this all really about? You don't usually make calls around this hour. Is the world ending today? Oh, you don't even fucking know, Zach. Sorry about that. Becca rang me up a few minutes ago looking for Isabella. Said she didn't show up in her own apartment last night. We both tried calling, but her phone seems to be off. Do you have any idea where... <laughs> I should have known you two would come looking for her first thing in the morning. Not a laughing matter, Zach. You can't really let your guard down with everything that's happened here recently. You've heard about the Cooper one from the news. Everyone in the precinct has been restless ever since the incident the other day. Yeah, I get what you mean. Listen, Ash, about... about Bella. I let my voice trail off, I'm sure. I've had to go about recounting last night. If I should even say anything to him. He might be a close friend, but at the end of the day, whatever's bothering her ain't mine to speak of in the first place. That's a very good point. On the bed, Isabella remains as still as when I transferred her the night before. Sometime during her sleep, she pulls up a blanket over herself and tucked it into it comfortably. Like this, it's easy to forget the horror in her eyes or how much her hands and lips trembled. Save for her firm grip on the edge of the covers, she appears nearly as normal as she would any other day. Almost. Mm -hmm. I'm not really sure how to go about this while being... Zach, what about her? Something, the worry, the concern, must have surfaced in my tone because his own shifts then. Carefully, as if he's preparing for the worst. Look, you don't have to worry about her. She's with me right now. Since last night, in fact. Oh. Why didn't you just say so earlier? She kind of knocked in the middle of the night. I couldn't possibly wake you two over that. And with how things are when she arrived, I thought it'd be best if I let her rest first. And I just wasn't expecting people would be looking for her before the rooster even crows. You could have at least called her something. Becca's beside herself with worry when she found out. You know how much she frets about the smallest stuff. I know, I know. I'm sorry. That was a lapse on my part. And I just didn't think, okay, you know what? Rebecca's worries ain't completely baseless. Oh, so so much for not telling her fucking secrets. Isabella hasn't been her usual self since the movie. Maybe even before that. I don't know if I should be opening my mouth about this, but... Bella didn't outright say I shouldn't, so... So something's wrong then? Um... Not quite sure, to be completely honest. I couldn't get the story out of her. Really? I thought you'd learned something from me by now. Dude, I'm a photographer. I'm not a fucking detective, alright? Jesus, give me a break. That's not it. <laughs> Ash, when she appeared at my doorstep last night, she was shaking, and, and when I tried to ask her about it, she just panicked. Had this frightened look on her face. I'd be surprised if this was the first time I've seen it, but it ain't. Dude, the first time, she was screaming. I'm trying to remember when this was. Was this when she saw the ghost in the shop window, maybe? I can't remember. First time? When was this? Maybe I should just keep reading, <laughs> and it'll fucking tell me. You weren't talking about the thing in the movie house, are you? Because that was just us fooling around. Granted, I think I went overboard with the joke, but... No, it happened the day after. Yeah, there you go. When she invited us to lunch, you weren't there. We were walking one second, and then the next, she's crying out. I'll be straight with you. That scared me shitless. It bothered him if the way he falls silent after is telling. But whatever his opinion is, stays absent from his voice when he speaks again. He's always been good with that, hiding what he thinks. Did she say anything else? Nothing. Won't tell me anything aside from a few vague words. I didn't want to push it. Where is she? Is she still sleeping? Right here with me. Still sleeping. Should I wake her up or something? Let her know you guys are looking for her? No need. Let her rest. I'll drop by in a few. Today? Don't you have work at this time? I mean, I can drop her off home myself before meeting my client later. 
Who keeps talking? My schedule's flexible, Ash. <laughs> Last time I checked, you're the one who didn't have that luxury. How on earth do you think I'm able to tag along when you need me? It's not completely out of the way. They live on the other side of the town from you, Ash. Your definition of out of the way is a little screwed up, you know. It's fine. I have some things I need to do anyway. I'll call you back. I've gotta let Becca know that Scared Cat's fine. Bye. Fuck you. That... Come on, man. Really? Ugh. What a dick thing to say. Jesus Christ. All right. I... For a minute, I almost thought I liked Ash again, and then I'm like, yeah, I, I don't know. Come morning, Zachary received a phone call from Ashton, who's looking for Isabella. Zachary informed him that she stayed over, and of the circumstances. Before ending the call, Ashton offered to pick her up. Okay, guys. Well, I think this is a good place to go ahead and wrap up today's episode. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, please be sure to leave a like and a comment down below. Please, definitely leave a comment down below letting me know what the deal was with that quick time event with Hannah, because I'm still confused about it. I went through it a second time, I still don't know. Because it seemed like the only thing to do was to hit the tab key. And that seemed to skip over it. So I'm not sure, I feel like I missed something. I don't really know what I missed. Um, so definitely let me know what that was about. Or also just, you know, make conversation. And make sure you're subscribed for more of the letter and more Tales of Exilia, and Tales of Exilia 2, when uh, the first Exilia ends, which won't be for a while, um, and whatever I re decide to replace the letter with when the letter ends. That, I'm currently deciding between two games, leaning favorably towards one, um, and I think I'm going to leave it as a surprise. So, get hyped for that, make sure you're subscribed for whenever episode one of whatever the fuck it is, is going to go up. And, uh, next time, we're assuming Ash is gonna come over and pick up Isabella, so we'll see what happens then. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye.